Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. What happens next? Now once the replication fork structure is formed, now DNA polymerase can do its job. Now what is the job of DNA polymerase? To create a copy of both these separated strands. So it has to create a copy of this strand and it has to create a copy of this strand as well. So here we will talk about two types of synthesis. So on one strand, it is, there is continuous synthesis and on the other strand, there is discontinuous synthesis. So the strand where continuous synthesis takes place, that is known as the leading strand. So this is the leading strand and the strand where discontinuous synthesis takes place, that is known as the lagging strand. So please understand the concept carefully now because here things are not very simple. You really need to understand what's happening. So, so what is DNA polymerase doing? It has to create a copy of this strand. It also has to create a copy of this strand. Now this side, the synthesis is continuous. That is the new strand is being created in a continuous manner. But on the other side, that is on the lagging strand, the synthesis is discontinuous. So you see the arrows are being broken at the middle. So it is not getting synthesized continuously. There are breaks in between. Now how and why do we have those breaks? We will understand. So first let us talk about continuous synthesis because it is comparatively simpler. Now so continuous synthesis happens on the leading strand. So this strand is referred as the leading strand. Here the DNA polymerase reads the leading strand template and adds complementary nucleotides continuously. So in this case, it is quite simple. So the DNA polymerase comes into picture. It will read the sequence of bases on this strand and depending on that, it will keep on creating the new bases on this side. And that is how the new strand will be formed. Just for an example, let us suppose this is how the sequence is on the existing strand. Okay, now when the DNA polymerase comes, so what it will do, it will just as, as it moves like this, as, as it moves over this, it will read these letters and it will create their corresponding letters on the other strand and that is how the new strand will get created and these two strands will be complementary to each other. So a new copy of DNA will be formed from here. Now it is very obvious that since for this strand this is the 3 prime end so what will be the this end it is going to be 5 prime end because this is the new strand which has to be complementary to this strand. So therefore they, has to, they have to be anti-parallel to each other. So therefore this will be 5 prime and this will be 3 prime. So you get two strands complementary to each other. So DNA is synthesized in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So here you can see this is how DNA is being synthesized. The red arrow denotes the direction of DNA synthesis. So here DNA will be synthesized from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So here you can see that Whenever we talk about the leading strand, the DNA gets synthesized in the same way, in the same direction as the growing replication fork. The replication fork is also growing in this direction, right? Because enzyme helicase is moving in this direction. Correct? So as the enzyme helicase is moving in this direction, so the replication fork is gradually increasing in this direction. So the direction in which the replication fork is growing is the same as the direction in which the continuous synthesis takes place in the leading strand. So we can observe the movement of the two enzymes helicase and DNA polymerase which will show that how the, uh, the direction of replication fork growing and the direction of continuous synthesis is the same. So let us have a look at the animation. So as I said, in the first step what happens, the helicase will move and it will separate the two strands by making hydrogen bonds. Now what happens, this is the continuous strand. So this is the, this is the strand where continuous synthesis takes place. So here what will happen, DNA polymerase come into picture and as the DNA polymerase moves through this strand, it reads the sequences on this strand and creates the complementary strand. And then these two strands together are complementary with each other and then they form a new DNA altogether. So this is how continuous synthesis takes place. So if you look at this animation, what do you see? The growth of the replication fork is also in this direction. So if you want, we can just rewind it once again to see. So 
just try to observe this. As this enzyme, this helicase is moving in this direction, the replication fork is growing in this direction, right? So gradually this is growing in this direction. So similarly, when the DNA polymerase comes into picture, the DNA synthesis is also taking place in the same direction. So that is why we said that in continuous synthesis, why it is called continuous synthesis? Because you see the new DNA is being synthesized continuously or we can say the new strand is being created continuously. That is why it is called continuous synthesis. So now what is left out? Now we have to see that how DNA polymerase will create a new strand on the, this side. That is on the lagging strand. So now we will talk about discontinuous synthesis. So how discontinuous synthesis takes place? Now, the synthesis, this continuous synthesis is more complicated than continuous synthesis and it happens on the lagging strand. So, where is the lagging strand? So, this side is referred to as the lagging strand. Now, initially, when the process of synthesis was actually described or discovered for the first time, it was assumed, people thought that on both the strands, continuous synthesis take place. But later, there was a scientist named Okazaki who, who knew that since the two strands of DNA are anti-parallel to each other, so he said that continuous synthesis cannot take place in both the strands. As per him, the process of synthesis cannot be same on both the strands because the way DNA polymerase works is that what it does is it keeps on adding a new free nucleotide to the three prime end of a new strand. So basically what it does is it will keep on adding a free nucleotide to the free end. And what is the free end for it? The three prime end. So in case of this strand, the leading strand, there, there is a free three prime end. So DNA polymerase was able to do its job. But in case of the lagging strand, this is the five prime end. So there is no three prime end. So there is no free end where DNA polymerase can add a free nucleotide because it can add a new nucleotide only to a pre-existing three prime hydroxyl group. Because if you remember the structure of DNA, I said that on the three prime end, there is the hydroxyl group. And on the five prime end, what do we have? the phosphate exactly so for dna polymerase to work it needs a three prime hydroxyl free end so which is available only on one strand and it is never possible to make a three prime end available on both leading and lagging strand because they are both part of the same parental dna and the two strands are always anti-parallel to each other so obviously if one side is three prime the other prime will definitely be five prime so the doubt was that now dna polymerase cannot directly start adding a free nucleotide and cannot directly synthesize the way it was doing on the leading strand. So what can be done in this case? And this is where the need for the enzyme primings came up. So it needed, in this case, DNA polymerase cannot initiate the process. So somebody else was needed to initiate the process or to provide a free three prime hydroxyl group. So who is going to provide that three prime hydroxyl group? So that was done by the enzyme primase. So I hope you understood this concept that why continuous synthesis cannot take place on the lagging strand because there is no free three prime hydroxyl end here. So this is the lagging strand here. Synthesis happens in short separate fragments. So now how exactly the synthesis is going to happen in this case? So what will happen here is DNA, not DNA, primase enzyme will come and it will create a very small portion of RNA, which is also known as primer. And above this RNA, the DNA will come and it will create, it will add the free nucleotides to the free hydroxyl group of that RNA primer. So that is how it is going to happen. Things will be more clear when we look at the animation in this case. So the every time here the uh, way synthesis will happen is small small fragments of new of the new strand will get created and then 
there will be another enzyme okay so first let us talk about primase i already discussed anyways primase will initiate this process by creating a small rna segment which is called rna primer now as soon as this rna primer is created a free hydroxyl group is me being made available to the enzyme dna polymerase so now dna polymerase can add the free nucleotides to this rna primer so we got the free nucleotides so what happens a small fragment of uh, the new dna is being formed now similarly many such small fragments will keep on forming due to the action of enzyme primase and enzyme dna polymerase but we need a complete a strand of dna we do not want it in pieces so we need something to join these small small pieces so these pieces are joined by yet another enzyme now as i said after enzyme primase the role is being performed by dna polymerase which will extend the rna primer adding more free nucleotides to it so as a result small fragments will be formed now the rna primers will now be removed and replaced with dna because we do not want any rna on the complementary strand of dna and then these small fragments are joined together by an enzyme called dna ligase so that is the purpose of dna ligase all these small small fragments will be joined together to form the complete strand of dna now these small fragments which are being formed here in this case the small fragments formed here are known as the okazaki fragments and why are they called okazaki fragments it was named after the same scientist who described this process of of discontinuous synthesis so that is why these fragments are called okazaki fragments so i i am sure that you would have not got it completely right now but just try to understand that on the lagging strand dna polymerase cannot directly do the synthesis because dna polymerase in order to add free nucleotides basically it is not doing anything it is it just keeps on adding more and more nucleotide it reads the current uh, sequence of bases and it and correspondingly it keeps on adding more nucleotides but for that it needs a free three prime hydroxyl end and it gets this three prime hydroxyl end on the leading strand but not on the lagging strand therefore it cannot initiate the process on the lagging strand so it needs something to initiate the process and that something is enzyme primase so enzyme primase will create a very small fragment of rna here and that fragment will have a free hydroxyl end so the free hydroxyl end is there therefore dna polymerase we will start adding the free nucleotides to that free hydroxyl end right now we do not want any rna part on a dna therefore the rna primers are then removed and replaced with dna so now what do we have we have all small small fragments of dna now how do we get all so many small fragments we will see that in the animation to understand better now all these small fragments of dna need to be joined together to form a complete strand of dna for that purpose we have the enzyme dna ligase which will join all these small fragments of dna to form a complete strand of dna and that is how a complete dna will be formed on this side and that is how you actually get from the parental dna you get one copy of dna here and one copy of dna here so that is how the process of discontinuous synthesis take place so let us have a look at the animation for better understanding please pay attention because this is going to be very important so we will start from the beginning what happens initially this what this is your parental dna right so enzyme helicase comes into picture and it divides the parental dna into the two strands so this is your this is going to be the leading strand where continuous synthesis will take place and this side will be the lagging strand where discontinuous synthesis will take place now on the leading strand what will happen since it has the leading strand on this side there will be a 3 prime hydroxyl end therefore the dna polymerase can directly act on it it will keep on adding free nucleotides and thus a new copy of dna will be formed so this side we have continuous synthesis so this part is all clear but on the lagging strand on this free end is a 5 prime end where there is no free hydroxyl group therefore dna polymerase cannot initiate the process on this strand it needs some other enzyme to initiate the process so that other enzyme is 
this one that is RNA primer which is being created by the enzyme primase. So the enzyme which you saw just now that was primase and this small green colored structure which you see here that is RNA, that is the primer the initial RNA fragment which is being created. So once this fragment is being created it has the free hydroxyl end at one side. Now as soon as a free hydroxyl end is being made available so DNA polymerase will come into picture because all it needed was a free hydroxyl end. As soon as it got a free hydroxyl end it will read it, it will keep on adding free nucleotides to it and it will also remove this RNA primer. So as you saw because this process will continue throughout right so every time a new RNA primer is being formed then a sequence of DNA is being formed only in that particular portion because again after that it doesn't have uh, a free hydroxyl end right because the hydroxyl end is always on this side so it will form the new segment on this side again later RNA primer will get added this side so a new segment will form from the through here again RNA primer will be here so a new segment will form will be formed from here to here so that is how a small fragment of DNA is being formed and this RNA was also removed but now we want to connect these DNA segments you see here this is one segment of DNA here again you have another segment again later you will have one more segment of DNA so all these segments need to be joined and for that purpose, we have this enzyme ligase to join all these DNA. And that is how a complete strand will be formed. So now again, what will happen here? You have a small fragment of RNA still remaining. So again, after this is over, the same cycle will repeat. So again, primase will come. It will create a small portion of RNA here. So again, DNA polymerase will come and it will create a DNA fragment like this. I mean that is it will add the free nucleotides like this and then this RNA will be removed and then again when ligase comes up it will join these two together. So that is how you will have a bigger strand and that is that is how this entire synthesis will take place. So now if you look at the process of discontinuous synthesis what do you see? The synthesis takes place in this direction which is the opposite direction to the direction of the growth of replication fork. You saw how the synthesis is happening. Synthesis means creation of this strand of DNA. So the synthesis is happening in this direction and that too in smaller fragments. So that is why it is called discontinuous synthesis. So this is how the entire process of DNA replication takes place. Uh, so research is still going on for more detail on DNA replication process. Okay, one more thing just to remind you. When I say that enzyme ligase is going to connect all these uh, different fragments of DNA, how, are, how is it going to connect them? By formation of bonds between the DNA frog, uh, fragments. So what kind of bonds will be formed between them? Yes, the phosphodiester bonds will be formed and that is how they will be connected. Okay, so as I was telling that research is still going on to get more detail on the process of DNA replication. Now, this entire process of DNA replication, it takes place during the synthesis phase of cell cycle in eukaryotes. You remember the cell cycle for eukaryotes where you have uh, the three phase, like first you have the interphase, after which only you have the M phase, that is mitosis or meiosis. So during the interphase also you have a G1, that is gap 1 phase, then synthesis phase and then gap 2 phase. So during that synthesis phase, this replication of DNA occurs, that is creating a copy of DNA takes place during the replication phase and this is how it happens at the level of DNA. So I hope now you will be able to understand like while we were talking about the cell cycle or when while we were talking about the chromosome level, we used to say that a, a copy of the chromosome is being created and that is how sister chromatids are formed. You remember those concepts? So what exactly is happening inside? Inside the DNA is also being copied and that is why both of them will have one one copy of DNA and this is how the DNA replication takes place. Please understand all this clearly so that you you really do, do not have to memorize because it is very difficult to memorize such stuff. So you need to understand them. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.